Robert, but she gets even. Hear how she used her cell phone to help police track him down. Plus, raising property taxes is a quick fix for cash-strapped cities now. A movement to put a stop to it is gaining speed at 6. On the broadcast tonight, the rush is on. Tonight, the Thanksgiving travel crunch. 42 million people on the move, and for some of them, stormy weather could make the going slow. Chaos in Cairo. Tens of thousands stay in the streets despite concessions from the military. Our Richard Engel is there again tonight. The rising cost of Thanksgiving, the price of turkey and trimmings way up this year. Is it taking a toll on a holiday tradition? And making a difference, an entire community turns out to help and tonight Tonight, a farmer and his wife have lots to give thanks for. NBC Nightly News starts now. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening, everyone. I'm Savannah Guthrie. In tonight for Brian, it is the eve of Thanksgiving, and they're off. Millions of Americans, 42.5 million to be exact, are expected to hit the airways, roadways, and rails this holiday. That is the most Americans traveling for Thanksgiving since the height of the recession. And it comes even as the cost of traveling is sky high. Airfares up 20 percent. The average price of a gallon of gas up 20 percent, too. And then there is the weather. Some big storms could add up to big hassles as Americans head home this weekend. And we've got it all covered, beginning with NBC's Tom Costello from Washington's Reagan National Airport tonight. Tom, good evening to you. Hi, Savannah, and good evening. You know, we've had some snow up in Vermont and in Maine, but beyond that, most of the nation's airports reporting really minimal delays today. Take a look at FlightAware.com, a live look at every single airplane in the sky over America at this hour. What's fascinating here is this is one of the busiest travel days of the year, and despite that, really a pretty good travel day, although we did start out in the soup up in the Northeast. From I-76 in Philadelphia to the Massachusetts Turnpike, the nation's Thanksgiving getaway hit an early snag in the Northeast. NBC's Mike Taibbi started his day on New York's Grand Central Parkway. You can see the traffic is already building up here. The rain has been coming down in sheets. There's been some flooding in some spots. But as the rain moved out, it was mostly smooth sailing on the interstates by midday. Same story in Dallas and Indianapolis. And better than expected conditions out west, although an accident on the 101 near San Francisco Air Airport may have caused a few travelers to miss their flights. New York metros have some gusty winds. In Pittsburgh at the U.S. Airways Command Center, weather is the constant challenge. Okay, we just got advised that runway one has opened up. Here they watch every airport, plane, pilot, and crew in real time. 3,200 flights a day, 650 planes, 200,000 passengers, and over the Thanksgiving travel rush, nearly a million passengers. Across all airlines, some 3.4 million leisure travel Travelers will be in the skies. So far this year, eight of the ten most delayed airports are on the East Coast, with Newark the worst. U.S. Airways says it's determined not to be slapped with a steep fine for keeping passengers on a runway for hours on end, as other airlines have. At two hours, I have to ensure that the flights have a definitive plan to get back to the gate, either take off or get back to the gate. On the ramp in Charlotte, they've been waiting for this week. Picks up holiday time. It starts kicking in now through Thanksgiving. A delay anywhere in the system can ripple across any airline in a matter of hours. We are six minutes away from departure. We should be closing the flight out soon. And with all airlines flying full, if you miss a flight, it could be days until you're rebooked. Back live, I want to show you a pretty cool app for the iPad. This is called Flight Board. It shows you any city, any airport in the country. This is LaGuardia Departures, and you can see they've got departure delays tonight, one to two to three hours. The same story as you scroll up, by the way. Same story is in Philadelphia and Boston and JFK, really up and down the East Coast, also in San Francisco. So a pretty good app if you want to keep track of what's going on. And also FlyFAA.gov reports uh, they've got minimal delays in the country, but the Northeast and San Francisco are the problem areas. Savannah, back to you. All right, NBC's Tom Costello in Washington for us. Tom, thanks. Well, we mentioned the weather, and it will be a factor for travelers this weekend. We turn to the Weather Channel's Chris Warren for that part of the story. Chris, good evening to you. 
Good evening to you too, Savannah. And as we just heard, the Northeast and San Francisco dealing with some of the weather right now in the form of the low clouds. If we take a look at the satellite radar combination, take a look at where we're seeing the rain and the clouds, it's the Northeast and the West. Now, in the Northeast, we are seeing a storm that is moving out. And as it moves out, uh, the snow and the rain that we've been seeing throughout the day will come to an end. And then in the Pacific Northwest, that next system moves in and another disturbance moving into California. Overnight, we're seeing the morning hours and Thanksgiving. Fog will be a concern in the Great Lakes in parts of the Mississippi Valley. While it will be cold in the northeast, we have that next system for Thanksgiving evening moving in the Pacific Northwest. We're looking at rain and wind for the lower elevations and snow in the higher elevations. Things will be unsettled in Southern California as well. Heading home now, on Sunday, we could have some issues as the system's taking shape throughout parts of the Mississippi Valley, the Ohio Valley, down to the south in the Great Lakes. Uh, we do have a chance for some wet roads out there because of the system and any air delays from Atlanta to Chicago, Savannah, we know could cause ripple effects across the country. Uh, don't even say it. Chris Warren at the Weather Channel for us. Thank you so much. We move now to Egypt and the violence and chaos in Cairo. The protests continue today for the fifth day, despite the fact that the Egyptian military has now agreed to accelerate the transition to civilian rule. But with at least 38 dead, there is no sign tonight that the tens of thousands of people who've been taking to the streets are inclined to stop. Our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, is in Cairo again for us tonight. Richard, good evening. Uh, good evening, Savannah. As you can see, there are no signs at all that these protests are letting up. Now, some political parties in this country have accepted the military's compromise and have already begun negotiations to form a new government. But it's not enough for these protesters who want an immediate end to military rule. In Tahrir Square, no backing down. Peaceful protesters demanding democracy from an entrenched military which is beating them back. But is that the full picture? We left Tahrir, went down a nearby alley. It leads to the front line where demonstrators have clashed with security forces for five days. Today, protesters flipped over cars, preparing defensive barricades. They showed us tear gas canisters and shotgun shells, evidence they claim of the brutality against them. Their anger is directed at Egypt's military. The people want to try the field marshal, they shouted, referring to the head of the Egyptian military. As we went further, we found something unexpected. Soldiers were trying to prevent clashes. These soldiers have set up a blocking position to keep back demonstrators. But what's different this time is that the army is trying to show restraint. It's an attempt by the military to calm things down here. The army had positioned its troops and vehicles between the protesters and rows of poorly trained, often violent riot police. These men in black are especially hated by the demonstrators. The army's patience with the protesters was running short. What happens now? We These people are here. And what if they don't go? What if they don't go back? The, the army will, will withdraw, and the police will go and uh, go uh, fight with them. Minutes later, protesters started throwing stones. Up went the riot shields, but the army held fire. Then more stones. And as dusk fell, those riot police in black fired volley after volley of tear gas right over the soldiers' heads. We heard soldiers telling the police to stop. Everyone started to choke. Some soldiers helped the demonstrators. With the gas mask on, we jumped into an ambulance. A policeman was gagging on the gas he fired. So was a woman, a demonstrator. The ambulances streamed into Tahrir Square with the injured. They were greeted like heroes. And the crowd's demands to topple the military only grew stronger. Later this week, Savannah could prove to be decisive. They are planning another million-person demonstration after Friday prayers. All right, Richard, and I guess the question for Americans anyway is where the U.S. comes down on all this. On the one hand, the U.S. has been supportive of the protest movement in Egypt, but it also has these strong ties to Egypt's military.
Uh, the Egyptian military is critical for the United States. And it's also one of the only functioning organizations left in this country. It's pro-American. It maintains a peace treaty with Israel. But these people want to see it toppled. And if that happens, the Muslim Brotherhood would be immensely empowered. And that could lead to a more anti-American Egypt. Well, it's an incredibly complicated picture of Richard Engel in Cairo again for us tonight. Thank you. And one other note from the region. After months of street protests demanding he step down, Yemen's President Saleh has finally signed an agreement transferring power to his vice president, a move that could end Saleh's 33 years of rule. That is, if he lives up to his word, he has reneged on these kinds of promises before. Back here at home, presidential politics, and they're called debates for a reason. The Republican candidates for president sparred again last night, exposing serious divisions over some of the most pressing national security matters of the day, including the security of America's borders. NBC's Andrea Mitchell reports. Newt Gingrich. For the first time, Newt Gingrich was front and center, reflecting his recent surge to the top of the polls. On immigration, Gingrich disagreed with the other candidates, calling for a path to citizenship for illegal immigrants who are longtime residents and have paid taxes. And I'm prepared to take the heat for saying, let's be humane in enforcing the law without giving them citizenship but by finding a way to create legality. That's gonna only encourage more people to come here illegally. On Twitter today, Gingrich struck back, tweeting out video of Romney endorsing amnesty the last time he ran for president. The 12 million or so that are here illegally should be able to sign up for permanent residency or citizenship. Still, Gingrich's comments could cost him support from a key Republican in the first caucus state. When you give people even a promise that they can stay in the country after they're here illegally, you get you become a, a more of a magnet, and it is a form of amnesty, and more people will come in counting on that. Gingrich also stirred the pot on Iran, endorsing regime change to stop Iran from building a nuclear weapon. I think replacing the regime before they get a nuclear weapon without a war beats replacing the regime with a war, which beats allowing them to have a nuclear weapon. John Huntsman also went after Mitt Romney for wanting a gradual troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. I, I totally disagree. I think we need to square with the American people about what we've achieved. Are, are you suggesting, Governor, that we just take all our troops out next week? Or what, what's your Did proposal? You hear what I just said? Yeah, I said we should draw down from 100,000. We don't need 100,000 troops. The debate exposed deep disagreements on foreign policy. Even though audience questioners were all fellow conservatives, most from the Bush and Reagan administrations, except for the moderator, a respected, well known journalist. No, Blitz, that's oversimplifying it. I'm sorry, Blitz, I meant Wolf, okay? Blitz, Wolf. <laughs> since, since we own a. Since we're on a blitz debate, I apologize. Well, the candidates can give thanks for a break. They don't debate again until December 10th. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington. Coming up, the time with family at Thanksgiving may be priceless, but that turkey is not. Why the cost of everything on your table is going up this year. And later, making a difference, a place where they're harvesting friendship this year. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our communities. On November 26th, you can make a huge impact by shopping small on Small Business Saturday. One purchase. One purchase is all it takes. So pick your favorite local business and join the movement. I pledge to shop small at Big Top Candy Shop. Allen's Boots. At Juno Baby Store. Make the pledge to shop small. Please. Shop small on Small Business Saturday. I couldn't conceive this as a heart attack. But the doctor leaned over and said to me, you just beat the Widowmaker. I was put on an aspirin, and it's part of my regimen now. Be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. Go see your doctor now. My name is Marjorie Reyes, and I'm a Chief Warrant Officer. I love the fact that Quicken Loans provides VA loans. Quicken Loans understood the details and guided me through every step of the process. I know wherever the military sends me, I can depend on Quicken Loans. Humana believes nothing is more important than relationships. Relationships are life. If you don't have that thing that fills your heart and your soul, you're missing that part of your life that just fulfills you. For us at Humana, the better we know you, the better we can help you choose the right Humana Medicare plan. 
That's why Humana agents sit down with you to figure out your Medicare options. And we have nurses you can call anytime, even at 3 a.m. Because when you're on the right Humana Medicare plan and taking good care of yourself, then you can be there for the people who matter most. My family is my joy, my hope. They are my heart. It's the reason we get out of bed in the morning. The reason we fall into bed at night sometimes. Yes, that's right. Humana. Go inside a school cheating epidemic where the students aren't the ones at fault. Teachers would get together and they would literally change answers on their tests. Haley Smith investigates. Rock Center with Brian Williams. Monday at 10, 9 central on NBC. Sunday, a clash over taxes derails the super committee. So what happens next? Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer of New York and controversial Republican power player Grover Norquist. Sunday on Meet the Press with David Gregory. Back now with news about the cost of tradition. This is the holiday, of course, for giving thanks, but only the sentiment is free. The price of a Thanksgiving dinner has climbed by the highest amount in 20 years. So why now? NBC's Janet Shamlin explains. Shopping for her family's Thanksgiving dinner has given Christy Stone a case of sticker shock. Can't live without that. It's just a small family gathering with a bigger than ever price tag. I buy just what I need. You know, I, I have my list with me, so I buy just what I need, no more, no less. A traditional Thanksgiving meal with all the trimmings will cost 13% more this year. That's the largest jump in more than two decades. Across the board, everything is more expensive, from frozen peas to a package of rolls. But nothing has climbed more than the traditional bird. Turkey is up more than 20% in just one year. And the rest of the feast, too. Pumpkin pie mix, if you can find it, will cost 41 cents more. Stuffing is up 24 cents. Cranberries and sweet potatoes up 7 cents each. It, it looks like some of the major factors influencing price have been higher energy prices overall, which really do influence prices on all of the items that we survey, uh, and also strong demand globally for food products. Take pecans. 30% of the U.S. supply is being exported at a time when the hard harvest has taken a severe hit from the drought. Overall, it's going to be down quite a bit in Texas. Pecan grower Pete Pavlosky says production has fallen from 70 million to 40 million pounds just in Texas, and prices are skyrocketing. Some people are getting 11 and 12 dollars a pound for shell pecans. Next year, they're probably going to go up more. And yet shoppers like Lynn Buchanan say the long-held tradition of the bountiful meal is not one they'll scrimp on. I'm sure the dinner will cost at least $200, but it's just once a year, so we do it. Higher prices taking a bite out of the holiday, as giving thanks gets more expensive. Janet Shamlian, NBC News, Houston. Meanwhile, on Wall Street, stocks were down for a sixth straight day. The Dow dropped more than 236 points. NASDAQ down more than 60. And the S&P also down more than 25 points. The markets will be closed tomorrow for the holiday. When we come back, a time-honored tradition at the White House served with a side of comedy from the president. It's simple physics. A body at rest tends to stay at rest, while a body in motion tends to stay in motion. Staying active can actually ease arthritis symptoms, but if you have arthritis, staying active can be difficult. Prescription Celebrex can help relieve arthritis pain so your body can stay in motion, because just one 200 milligram Celebrex a day can provide 24 hour relief for many with arthritis pain and inflammation. Plus, in clinical studies, Celebrex is proven to improve daily physical function so moving is easier. And Celebrex is not a narcotic. When it comes to relieving your arthritis pain, you and your doctor need to balance the benefits with the risks. All prescription insets like Celebrex, ibuprofen, naproxen, and meloxicam have the same cardiovascular warning. They all may increase the chance of heart attack or stroke, which can lead to death. This chance increases if you have heart disease or risk factors such as high blood pressure or when insets are taken for long periods. NSAIDs, including Celebrex, increase the chance of serious skin or allergic
allergic reactions, or stomach and intestine problems such as bleeding and ulcers, which can occur without warning and may cause death. Patients also taking aspirin and the elderly are at increased risk for stomach bleeding and ulcers. Do not take Celebrex if you've had an asthma attack, hives, or other allergies to aspirin, NSAIDs, or sulfonamides. Get help right away if you have swelling of the face or throat or trouble breathing. Tell your doctor your medical history and find an arthritis treatment for you. Visit Celebrex.com and ask your doctor about Celebrex for a body in motion. It's the friendly face behind the counter, the service that goes beyond business, and the comfort in spending close to your home. Just a few reasons to shop small this holiday season. Need more? How about building your local economy and keeping character in your community? Let's bring the hustle and bustle of the holiday season back to Main Street. Remember to shop small and close to home on Small Business Saturday this November 26th. To learn more on how you can shop small, like us on Facebook at Small Business Saturday. This is an important message for people with diabetes from Bear Diabetes Care. If you currently order Bear's Contour or Breeze 2 test strips from Liberty Medical, you may no longer be able to receive them. Don't worry. Our diabetes specialists are standing by to help you find another authorized home delivery supplier for Bear test strips free of charge. To continue home delivery of Contour or Breeze 2 test strips, call Bear's toll-free number today at 888-877-9175. That's 888-877-9175. It's the most wonderful sale of the year, and it's going on now at Newton Nissan in Gallatin, Tennessee's Nissan Giant. Get a new Rogue for just $179 a month. Look at this beautiful new 2012 Altima. It can be yours for just $139 a month. Or this new 2012 Versus, just $149 a month. And at Newton Nissan, let us pay off your trade no matter what you owe. If you want to go where people know what they're doing and they treat their customers right, then you found the right dealership. Don't miss the most wonderful sale of the year at Newton Nissan in Gallatin, Tennessee's Nissan Giant. You are looking at a dramatic accident in New Zealand. A helicopter pilot helping to install a Christmas tree crashed when the chopper's blades got stuck in cables attached to the scaffolding. The pilot and ground crew, believe it or not, are doing just fine today. What a mess along the Pennsylvania Turnpike near Pittsburgh on Tuesday night. A tanker truck loaded with driveway sealant sprung a leak and coated part of the roadway with a thick tar over a 40-mile stretch of road. The stuff came out gooey and hot and then quickly dried on the pavement. Crews had to use sand and snow plows to clean it up. Officials there say the driver of the truck will be cited for violations. About 150 cars were caught in that muck, significantly slowing the drive to Grandma's house for the holiday. Today in Washington, the president did what presidents have done for the last 64 years now, pardoned the national Thanksgiving turkey. This year's lucky bird, appropriately named Liberty, along with his understudy Peace, were officially spared at the White House as the first family looked on. Some of you may know that that recently I've been taking a series of executive actions that don't require congressional approval. Well, here's another one. We can't wait to pardon these turkeys. Literally. Otherwise, they'd end up next to the mashed potatoes and stuffing. Uh, now, I'm told that in order to prepare liberty and peace for their big day, uh, the students expose them to loud noises and flash bulbs so that they'd be ready to face the White House press corps. Uh, this is actually true. Uh, they also received the most important part of their media training, which involves learning how to gobble without really saying anything. And this afternoon, the president and his family took two other turkeys unpardoned to a local food bank. Well, here in New York City, despite the rainy weather, those giant balloons for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade are taking shape tonight. Tens of thousands of parade goers are expected to line the streets in the morning. And that's a good time to remind you that the 85th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade kicks off tomorrow at 9 o'clock a.m. here on NBC, hosted by our own Ann Curry and Matt Lauer. Coming up next, making a difference. Where there was a need, the people came with a harvest of help. Americans are always ready to work hard for a better future. Since Ameriprise Financial was founded back in 1894, they've been committed to putting clients first. Helping generations through tough times, good times, never taking a bailout. There when you need them. Helping millions of Americans over the centuries. The strength of a global financial leader. The heart of a one-to-one -one relationship. Together, 
for your future. If you think Tylenol is the pain reliever orthopedic doctors recommend most for arthritis pain, think again and take a leave. It's the one doctors recommend most for arthritis pain. Two pills can last all day. Hey, where's Harriet? <laughs> Must be the OSCAL. Only OSCAL Ultra has the most calcium and D3 plus seven bone health nutrients. So you can always be strong with OSCAL. Last Thanksgiving, about two million people tried to deep fat fry their turkey. Fifteen succeeded in setting their houses on fire. At Christmas, there was a lot of driving over the river and through the woods and a little bit of skidding on the ice and taking out Grandma's garage door. So while you're celebrating, Allstate will be standing by. Trouble never takes the holiday. Neither should your insurance. That's Allstate, Stan. Are you in good hands? taste of 2% milk. But think about your heart. 2% has over half the saturated fat of whole milk. Want to cut back on fat and not compromise on taste? Try Smart Balance Fat-Free Milk. It's what you'd expect from the folks at Smart Balance. My sinus symptoms come with a cough that stays even after I treat. Truth is, most sinus formulas don't treat a cough. Really? Alka-Seltzer Plus Sinus Liquid Gels fight sinus symptoms plus cough. You're good. Thanks. That's the cold truth. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our communities. On November 26th, you can make a huge impact by shopping small on Small Business Saturday. One purchase. One purchase is all it takes. So pick your favorite local business and join the movement. I pledge to shop small at Big Top Candy Shop. Allen's Boots. At Juno Baby Store. Make the pledge to shop small. Please. Shop small on Small Business Saturday. female driver is flashed by another driver, but she gets even. Hear how she used her cell phone to help police track him down. Plus, raising property taxes is a quick fix for cash-strapped cities. Now a movement to put a stop to it is gaining speed at 6. And finally, tonight, our Making a Difference report on a small farm in Illinois, a family facing a tremendous challenge will gather to celebrate Thanksgiving tomorrow, knowing that whatever happens, their friends and neighbors are there for them when it really counts. Kevin Tibbles has their story. On a cold, raw November day, spirits have been warmed on Glenn Bolander's farm. For here in rural Illinois, that age-old bond between neighbors remains sacred. You know, it's about giving. Glenn's wife, Carol, is battling breast cancer. And in the midst of coping with her illness, the family also had to get the fall harvest in. 940 acres of beans and corn. Out here, you don't need to ask for help. People just know. You know, all these farmers, they just called up and said they're going to show up and harvest this crop, and they did. Onto the farm rumbled combines, semi-trucks, grain carts, and people. More than a hundred, all drawn by word of mouth. It's just um, so heartwarming to see a sight like that. Pink ribbons flew from the farm machinery in honor of Carol, and in one day, these neighbors, already busy with their own harvest, did what would have taken Glenn Bolander a month to do. I still get choked up about it. Uh, to, to think that that many people, you know, care and, and want to help. This time of year, people here say it's important to give thanks for what you have, but it's also important to give thanks for what you can give. That's what it is, just feeling good about doing something good for somebody else. You don't expect anything in return. You know, I do not. 65,000 bushels of corn, 80 truckloads, delivered to the grain elevator. And for the Bolanders who have pitched in themselves when neighbors needed help, it's a weight taken off. The farmers' hearts are bigger than the big pieces of equipment that they brought on our farm. Friends, neighbors, even strangers, proving the true spirit of Thanksgiving is still very much alive. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News, Genoa, Illinois. And that is our broadcast for this Wednesday night. Thank you for being with us. I'm Savannah Guthrie. We hope to see you right back here tomorrow evening. And we leave you with a look at Rockefeller Center getting ready for the holidays. That Christmas tree will be lit one week from tonight. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Tonight, fighting back. A woman armed with only a cell phone helps police track down an accused criminal. Last minute rush. We've got your Thanksgiving covered on the roads, in the forecast, and in the kitchen. And facing a 49% tax increase, residents are saying enough is enough. Working for